This is 1.8, the halogens. So for this topic, you should be able to recall the colours of the elements and explain the trends within the group, limited to physical state at room temperature, melting and boiling points. You need to be able to compare the solubility and colours of the halogens in water and in non-aqueous solvents, for example, hexane. You need to be able to describe the reaction of the halogens with cold, dilute and hot concentrated aqueous sodium hydroxide and explain the disproportionation in these reactions. Recall the reaction of chlorine with water to form chloride ions and chlorate 1 ions. Describe the trend in oxidising ability of the halogens down the group applied to displacement reactions of the halogens with other halide solution, ions in solution. Demonstrate understanding of the reaction of the solid halides with concentrated sulfuric and phosphoric acid in relation to the relative reducing ability of the hydrogen halides or halide ions and compare the advantages and disadvantages of adding chlorine and ozone to drinking water. So the halogens are group 7 of the periodic table. They exist as covalently bonded diatomic molecules such as F2, Cl2, Br2 and I2. So the non-polar molecules have weak van der Waals forces between them which increase in strength as the relative molecular mass of the molecule increases. So this leads to a trend in physical state at room temperature moving from gas to liquid to solid as the group is descended. So iodine vapour is a violet purple colour. When we look at the colours of the halogens, fluorine is yellow, chlorine is yellow green, green yellow or green, bromine is red brown or brown red and iodine is grey black or black grey. And note the use of hyphens in these, that's what the examiners expect to see. The physical states, fluorine and chlorine are both gas, bromine is a liquid and iodine is a solid. You can see that the melting point and boiling point both increase as you go down the group. So the halogens have low solubility in water, but they dissolve much more readily in non-polar solvents such as hexane, which exhibit the same main intermolecular force van der Waals interactions. And they are the most reactive non-metals in the periodic table. For example, despite chlorine having a low solubility in water, it reacts with it reacts with it over time, producing a mixture of two acids. The first is hydrochloric acid, HCl and chloric 1 acid HClO, which contains chlorate 1 ions. And the equation for that is given here. Cl2 plus H2O gives you HCl plus HClO. And we've seen this before. This reaction is a, an example of disproportionation as chlorine is both oxidised to chloric 1 acid and reduced to hydrochloric acid in the same step. When we look at the colours of the halogens dissolved in water, chlorine water is green or colourless, bromine water is orange, yellow or brown, iodine solution in polar solvents is brown or yellow and iodine solution in non-polar solvents is a violet or purple colour. So moving on to chlorine in water treatment, it's added to drinking water to kill bacteria and make it safer to drink and the use of ozone O3 is an alternative to chlorine in water sterilisation. So if we look at the advantages and disadvantages here, chlorine is cost effective, it provides residual protection as it's still present in the water when it reaches the consumer and it's more soluble in water. But the disadvantages, it gives drinking water an unpleasant taste and smell, it's toxic to humans except in small doses so care must be taken not to over chlorinate the water supply and it doesn't kill some microorganisms. If we compare that to ozone, the advantages are it's more effective at killing bacteria. It reacts with natural organic matter far better than chlorine does and it removes it from the water. And the breakdown product is oxygen, so there are no residual chemicals left, so no taste or smell to the water. The disadvantage is though it has higher costs, there's no residual protection against microorganisms and it's less soluble in water than chlorine, so it requires special mixing techniques. Next, we look at the reaction with sodium hydroxide solution. First, with cold dilute sodium hydroxide. In this case, sodium chlorate 1 is formed and a smell of bleach is noted. With hot concentrated sodium hydroxide, 
The chlorine is oxidized further to an oxidation state of plus five in sodium <clears throat> chlorate five. And the ionic equation for this then is three Cl2 plus six OH minus gives you five Cl minus plus ClO3 minus and three H2O. Bromine will produce sodium bromate one in a reaction at zero degrees and iodine will produce sodium iodate 1 at 0, but it will decompose rapidly. In displacement reactions, then, the trend in reactivity of the halogens can be illustrated by observing their effectiveness as oxidising agents. So the oxidising power of a halogen is a measure of the strength with which a halogen atom can gain an electron. And the halogens decrease in reactivity down the group as their oxidising ability decreasing. This is due to the increase in atomic radius and shielding, which results in a decreased attraction between the incoming electron and the atomic nucleus. The decrease in reactivity as the group is descended can be demonstrated by displacement reactions of aqueous halides using chlorine, bromine and iodine. So if we look at chlorine and sodium bromide, we'll get a displacement reaction to give sodium chloride and bromine. We can write the simple equation, Cl2 plus 2NaBr gives 2NaCl plus Br2, or the ionic equation, Cl2 plus 2Br minus gives 2Cl minus and Br2. Our observation here is that the solution changes from colourless to orange. And that's due to the production of the aqueous bromine. <clears throat> With chlorine and potassium iodide, we get iodine and potassium chloride. We can write the word equations and ionic equations as above. And the observation then is again the, the solution changes from colourless with sodium iodide to brown due to the aqueous iodine. Bromine will only oxidise iodide. So our ionic equation there, Br2 plus 2I minus gives I2 plus 2Br minus. And the observation is that the solution changes from colourless to brown due to the aqueous iodine. And iodine does not oxidise chloride or bromide. Now the halide ions can react, can act as reducing agents and the trend can be demonstrated in the reaction between the solid halide salts and concentrated sulfuric acid and the strength of the reducing power of the halide ion increases down the group. So both sodium fluoride and sodium chloride react with concentrated sulfuric acid to form the respective halides hydrogen fluoride and hydrogen chloride. And these gases are observed as steamy, misty fumes. <clears throat> so in each case here, you can see the halide reacting with sulfuric acid, giving us the sodium, sulfate, sodium hydrogen sulfate and the steamy fumes then of the hydrogen fluoride or hydrogen chloride. These reactions are classed as acid-base acid reactions. Um, hydrogen fluoride or hydrogen chloride are not sufficiently strong reducing agents to reduce the sulfuric acid, so no redox reactions take place. With bromide ions, they are stronger reducing agents than chloride and fluoride, and after the initial acid-base reaction, the bromide ions reduce the sulfur in the sulfuric acid from an oxidation state of plus 6 to plus 4 in sulfur dioxide. So we can see this reaction, we have sodium bromide plus the sulfuric acid gives us the hydrogen sulfate and the HBr and the hydrogen bromide goes on then to react with sulfuric acid to give us bromine, sulfur dioxide and water. Observations for this include misty steamy fumes of the HBr and a red brown vapour of the bromine which is produced in the second part of the reaction. Then iodide ions are the strongest halide reducing agents. They can reduce the sulfur in sulfuric acid from an oxidation state of plus six to plus four in sulfur dioxide from to zero in sulfur and then to minus two in hydrogen sulfide. And in addition to the acid base reaction, there are three possible redox reactions. So the acid base reaction is NaI, NaI sodium iodide plus sulfuric acid giving the sodium hydrogen sulfate and hydrogen iodide. First possible redox reaction, hydrogen iodide reacts with sulfuric acid to give us iodine, 
sulfur dioxide and water. The second possible reaction, hydrogen iodide with the sulfuric acid gives us iodine, sulfur and water. And in the third possible reaction again with the sulfuric acid, we get iodine, we get hydrogen sulfide and we also get water. So observations then include the steamy misty fumes of the hydrogen iodide, the grey black solid on the sides of the test tube and purple or violet vapour of iodine. The yellow solid sulphur and hydrogen sulphide which is a gas with a distinctive rotten egg smell. Only the acid base reaction occurs with halide salts and concentrated phosphoric acid as phosphoric acid does not act as an oxidising agent. So with sodium chloride, sodium bromide or sodium iodide with the phosphoric acid we're getting the hydrogen phosphate and HCl, HBr or HI as the products. So the observations there are the misty steamy fumes of the hydrogen halide which would be observed in each case.